It's time to get moving, people. Here's your look at the new NECA toys. This is the Kenner-inspired Sergeant Apone. Sporting now a right arm that's biomechanical, Sergeant Apone is tough and gritty. He keeps the Marines in line. I figure the first thing we'll do is get the dimensions for this figure. Not one of my better ones. Taking the tape measure and measuring to the very top of Sergeant Apone and stopping the Ultra Measuretron 5000 right at the very top, you're looking at a figure that stands 6.7 inches in height. I delayed waiting for somebody in the back of the mobbed audience to say, what about centimeters? What about centimeters, says this humbled reviewer. 17.2 centimeters tall is Sergeant Apone. And because we seem to have consistently done size comparisons, I say consistently, we've only done it two times before. I'm going to bring in the Scorpion Alien, a little harder to stand. Thank goodness it has its tail. And speaking of standing, uh, we also have, there we go, get the Snake Alien. This one's a little bit, sometimes a little bit more trickier to display because of the, the way the tail is. There we go. All right. Now we got, now we're in business, as they say. Uh, as you can see, size wise, Sergeant Apone, I certainly hope, has more Marines in check because he seems greatly outnumbered by the Scorpion Alien on the left and the Snake Alien on the right. Luckily, though, he does pack some firepower, but before we have a look at that, we'll have a look at the included comic that comes with Sergeant Apone. Oh, I'm disappointed disappointed that I didn't I still had this figure at one point and then there was that point of time in which when I moved I don't know where some of these original Kenner figures went I certainly would have loved to have done size comparisons and comparisons for the fact that these are almost like mirrored copies so the way that at least coloring wise what the figures look like back in the day just scaled and much cooler larger size the other thing I wanted to also show you, too, is that these comics that come included with these figures not only are captured from the original Dark Horse run of the Alien line, but they were also packaged with the original Kenner figures as well. Almost exact to this size, the booklet was exactly almost the same size as the ones we got with Kenner. So again, a nice little, again, nod from NECA Toys. Inside, we have some upgraded characters to their movie counterparts, including Sergeant Apone down at the bottom corner. Looks like they're about to do business with the Alien Queen. Uh, as we progressively go through it, some of the Xenomorphs look like they're being torched. Uh, again, through, as, through the many different pages, we're not going to get many introduced new aliens. It seems like a lot of centric around the idea of the Queen. There's Sergeant Apone, more Sergeant Apone. Play close attention, pay close attention to those. We'll get into those in a second. And uh, as we continue through the rest of the very short yet enjoyable comic, love for the fact, again, we get these packaged with these figures. Something also we get packaged with these figures, something you don't often see at times, are pliable stickers. How about that? A series of spades, the American flag, a few stars, Semper Fi, and of course, Apone are some of the stickers that you can peel off and put. I don't know really whereabouts I can put the stickers, even like Apone, for example. The logical place that I would have thought to put it was probably like right there, but the label does seem like it's a little bit on the longer side. Stickers are always so sort of a problem for me as well, because even applying stickers, I never feel like they're going to stay very long, especially if I'm moving the figures. Stickers always, over the course of time, seem to peel. It's just, just one of those things. Just one of those things. So, it does, like I said, comes with these stickers. I don't know if I'm likely to display him with any of them, because it really doesn't seem like a whole lot of places where you can put them. I mean, you don't want to round them around things because, I mean, that's pretty much guaranteed for the fact that these stickers are going to come off eventually. Like that they include them, not inclined likely to display them with them. What I am, however, going to be displaying Apone with is his series of different weapons, starting first with what looks almost to be like a futuristic shotgun, 
It's cast here primarily in like a dark gray color with a bit of a lighter silver added to the, the actual, would that be the cocking mechanism on the shotgun? It does have a strap that can easily be fit around his shoulder. I mean, if you want to drape it around his shoulder, for example, you can do that like that. Or of course, you can also put it in his hand. Now, I am a little relu reluctant about putting it into this hand, just primarily for the fact that there's a lot of moving components uh, to his arms. So probably I'll be more inclined to display the shotgun into this hand. I have to notice though as well, and point out to the viewing mob, that the, uh, the handle seems very broad on this figure, or at least on the shotgun getting into the figure's hand can be a little bit more trickier. It eventually fits in there, eventually surrenders itself. But I have to admit, like the handle does seem like it's a little on the broad side. Take this out of his hand. One other thing, of course, we want to look at is his whipping grenades. I don't know if that's the actual technical term for it, but the comics allude to it. Certainly, if you ever own the original Kenner figure, they also were included with the figure. Now, the ones the original coming included with Kenner was primarily like this color here, this sort of cream beige color made up the majority of it. It actually was a little bit more browner in color. I feel as if I actually did a review on the original Kenner Apone. I certainly have to go back and have a look at that. But needless to say, these, these kind of grenade sticks uh, we're all pretty much like a browner version, almost kind of closer to the little fins that were on the sides, closer to that color. The handles were not green, sort of, I guess, to keep it a little bit more rooted in mil military realism. NECA opted to give it more of a green handle rather than just having it all one molded plastic, which is basically what Kenner did. There's a couple of different ways that you can display it on the figure. Primarily, there's a few holes, two to be exact, on the back here. I'm just going to take this little tab. Don't worry if you get lost from going over looking for this one. There's another one just right around the corner. Just plug that into place. You can take the other one, plug that also into place. I suppose you could really display it, like I said, either way. If you want to display it like this. It looks a little bit more ridiculous. From the back, though, it kind of looks a little bit more like antenna. Um, I think with the Kenner version, though, there was only one way that it could be displayed. Well, that's not true being that they didn't have what I'm about to disclose in this review. They either sat really loose, dropping straight down like I did already right here, or because they were made up of softer plastic, they could also do the following. Why is this back turned? Well, the other thing that you can do, I'm not gonna do anything to them. The other thing that you can do with the uh, grenade stick though, is you can detach it. Now this certainly plays into the fact that when you are whipping this, you could pretend like these uh, extend or these detach from the handle portion and then you know you can throw them off. The other thing that NECA does also include not one but two of these these wire framed adjustable like almost like tubing you can see how the holes are in those those don't connect to anything it's just so that the the uh, wire can <laughs> breathe. Now, one thing you will want to do then is that you can take the handle and take, it doesn't really matter which side. You want to do this side, this, this side. Most of the, I think most people are saying this side. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter. Just attach it to the top, plug it in where that grenade was situated, and then take the grenade, now that has no home, find it a home. Just connect it to the end like so. And being that this is wired, now you've kind of got those wire whipped grenades Sure, that's not the name for them, but he had those in the grenade in the comics, and certainly he had them also in the figure, the original Kenner figure, that is. So let's revisit that. And again, there's a couple of different options you can display this guy with. If you plug it in, like we had had it until it fell off, you can either attach it like, like this, which you've got this really long handle. Makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. Realistically, you would imagine if he is being able to pull these off of his back and whip them, likely they're probably going to be facing this way. And you just want to, I mean, going for what I would imagine would be the logical sense. If he's pulling these off, like there we go, and he's whipping them like this, 
you're probably, at least for me, I'm going to be deta I'm going to be attaching it like so, like that. Maybe not right in his face, maybe not right in his face, but then you can have it as if a pawn is pulling them off and whipping them again at whatever target he has. You could also use your imagination and think that maybe when he is ready to grab one of these, that the the tube sort of just retracts on its own, and then he can use it, like I said, as a whipping mechanism. So. It's entirely up to you how you want to display them. You can have them down if you want. Down probably makes a little bit more sense. But logically, for the comics, just kind of the way that they have describe it in the comics, it would make more sense that he's actually pulling them off like this. And he's throwing them across at whatever alien is presently in front of him. So that's the couple of options you can go with for these. So I want to detach this, we'll just put that to the side. And that's his accessories in a nutshell, leading then only to have a look at this really neat looking rendition of a pwn. Sad a bit the fact that we didn't get ourselves a true aliens a pwn yet. Logically, I guess it made sense that NECA wanted to release this guy because he's just a lot more colorful and fun versus, you know, just another fully green and beige clad marine. Uh, we've certainly already got our fair share of them with Hicks, Hudson, and uh, Vasquez. A couple of other ones in there in the mix as well. So, I mean, this guy does have logically reasonings why they would want to give a, this guy a first and foremost outing before we got ourselves the movie tie-in Epone. The head sculpt is actually quite good. I really like this one a lot. Some people have actually taken to taking the head off, removing the side monitor here, and a communication antenna that he's got and uh, replacing it, taking the hat off, which is not removable by the way, and replacing it with one of the true movie helmets. I mean, you could go through that extensive process. I feel as if NECA eventually is just gonna really give us a, a movie version of a pwn anyways, and then you're gonna really kick yourself that you destroyed a figure just to get a custom made. Uh, the arms are really, again, nicely done. You've got one arm fully exposed, fully visible, and fully unarmed. Some veins running up the sides of the forearms. The other arm, on the other hand, or in this case, other arm, fully clad with mechanical appendage, just additional mechanical components. I am a little when it comes to moving things on this figure. Um, of course, Things go without saying that they are a little on the fragile side. Things like moving his arms, for example. There's a hinge right here, and there's actually a working piston, which I like. But again, like when you are moving the arms, just want to be a little careful of moving things. Because again, these are all sort of very small pieces that are put together, making up a larger puzzle, and any one of those pieces breaking, unfortunately, well, you know what's going to unfortunately happen with all of that. Now, they do ball socket the top section. As I said, there is a working piston that moves back and forth. It's harder to kind of see it unless you are specifically moving that part of the arm. As you can see, this is how it's attached to his four fingers, sort of just clawed around his four fingers, and it's also around his thumb as well. He's got this extra little piece that doesn't really seem to have a served purpose. It does hinge back and forth, I thought it might have connected to something, but I think it's. I think the intent of it is it just connects to the hand, or it's supposed to look like it's attached to the hand when it really isn't, just so that you don't sacrifice any moving on the hands. That's probably why that they haven't attached that the way that they have. Done primarily in all silver, there's not much additionally in paint that's been added here. Of course, the main coloring for this guy is the bright yellow No Bugs t-shirt. Love that. Love, uh, it's also been ripped on the sides there. And he's got these really bright kind of military green pants with some knee guards and some shin guards there as well. A little bit of red also added to the bottom. They've dirtied up, tarnished a bit the material down below here so the plastic doesn't feel new. You've got some washing there of some grays and some darker blacks. And even the under treads get a little bit of that as well. Figure doesn't have any problems really standing. Like I said, I really do think the head sculpt is very, very good. I really want to see more of Kenner themed figures. We're, of course, getting ourselves Dutch, which for me, like, Dutch is the one I'm really looking forward to. But I have to admit, I was really looking forward to also Epone. And uh, now, physically having him in hand, he really doesn't disappoint to the slightest. 
Let's have a look at this guy's posability, and then we'll wrap this up, because I'm sure you guys have dinner or something you need to go to right now. Thank you, by the way, for suspending your meal to come join me to watch reviews like this. I always appreciate that. The head hinges back and forth. It also hinges up and down, being the fact that this is a ball joint happening in there, folks. The arms hinge outward to about there. Um, you can also rotate the arms all the way around. Bend at the elbow, which also allows the arms to rotate. And you've also got hand articulation hinging back and forth. That is basics when it comes to the NECA figures. Also, new figures uh, also have the ball joint in the upper torso. Got to be a little careful, unfortunately, as you are seeing with your with your eyes, your peepers, you can probably see how that material, those strapping, those strappings of of plastic, sort of get pulled and tugged and maybe against their will. I don't know, but sooner or later, something is going to give. The last thing you certainly would want is this to break. So just be very careful of that. Um, he doesn't seem to have waist swivels. Legs hinge both out. Uh, you can rotate them forward and back. There's a swivel on the top cut of the thigh, basically where it connects to the ball joint. He has a double hinge on the knee. Love the way that the knee pad sort of just occupies the space between one neighbor and the other neighboring knee. Um, it does swivel there also with the leg and the feet hinge up and down, back and forth. I don't know why I like this part so much. I usually, my attention gets drawn to something that just doesn't logically make sense. Even like when I watch the video later and I'm editing it, just so fascinated by this section of his feet. Up here is, of course, the shin guard, part of his lower leg. But then he's got this also this little extra piece of love, this little bit of plastic right here. I don't know what purpose it serves. I mean, I guess it's so that the feet can move back and forth, but you're still covering off stuff, keeping the ball sockets hidden where they need to be hidden. I don't know why I bring so much attention to this, but I love it. I don't know why I like, I like it so much. So there's a pwn. I got distracted. I was looking at shin guard boot covers. At the end of the day, though, a really nice release from NECA Toys. Part of me really would have loved to see a movie rendition of Sergeant Apone, and now I'm actually seeing this guy in hand. If we had gotten the movie tie-in Apone and sacrificed getting potentially the Kenner-themed Apone, that would make me sad. Sadder than I think a non-released figure should really make a collector, but still sad nonetheless. NECA really knocked one out of the park when they released this Kenner-inspired Sergeant Apone. My only disappointment, unfortunately, was the fact that I know I have this figure somewhere. I'm certain I haven't sold it, but as it usually goes, I can't find the figure when it comes time to do a comparison in this video, which, rest assured, was the first thought I had when I picked up this figure from my local comic book store. It was, I probably even said it loudly, much to the surprise of the other patrons that were inside the comic book store. Oh, I have this figure. I'm going to see if I can find it. They, of course, looked at me. They didn't realize what I was talking about, but I knew what I was talking about, and that's really all that matters. But at the time that I'm shooting the record button, unfortunately, I still couldn't find my original Apone. He's somewhere in here, and maybe when I eventually find him, I'll do a size comparison. And maybe, you know what I'll even do, is maybe do a throwback of some of those original Kenner figures, because they're here somewhere, in a tote, buried away. I have to find them. Either way, though, really happy with how this figure turned out. I love even the fact that NECA was able to do the whole whip uh, grenade, those little grenade sticks that Sergeant Apone has, both in the comics and the original Kenner figures had this, and I like that NECA kind of does their own spin of it, adding some much-needed color, making them look a little bit more realistic. Might even very well be the way I'm going to display this figure when I put him on the shelf. Just really like, liking and digging the look of this. Sorry, Shotgun, you're going to have to not call Shotgun this time around. Either way, though, guys, if you are interested in picking up the new Kenner-themed Sergeant Apone from the folks over at NECA Toys, some good news is you should be able now to find this guy at your local comic book store along with the Scorpion Alien and the snake alien that we also had a look at, all from this new wave of NECA figures. Also, if you wanted to go back and have a look at all my other NECA reviews, there's playlists, various playlists, depending on what your fancy is. And if your fancy is also to subscribe to this channel and you haven't done so already, 
you don't have to admit it. It's okay. But make sure as well, though, you hit that little subscribe button down below because then you'll never miss a beat boom, boom, shh, when new videos are coming soon to this channel. Thanks for watching, guys, as you always do. Thanks for commenting down below. If you've managed, by the way, to either still hold on to your Kenner Epon, you don't have to rub my face in it, or, 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 you managed to pick up this figure for yourself, let me know down below in the comments section what you guys think of the figure. Always like... Uh, having conversations, having discussions with fellow collectors who all have similar passions as I do, collecting up and picking up plastic pieces like this. It's nice to know that there's other people out there that are doing the exact same thing and loving it like I am. Thanks for watching, guys, once again, and I'll see you guys next time.